Hello, my name is Abner Ramirez, and today I want to talk to you about simple Raycast algorithms. In the realm of computer graphics, Raycast algorithms can be used in shooter games to approximate the paths of bullets, to detect the point where the user is clicking, to detect nearby geometry, and many other applications. You can think of Array as a line representing a laser that gets shot out of a point until it collides with an object. This process of casting a ray from a point in a direction and calculating where the ray collides is called a ray cast algorithm. The ray itself is only defined by a point and a direction, although sometimes it is more helpful to define it by a parametric equation. For those who don't know what that is, you can think of a parametric equation as a function that has a scalar input and outputs a point. In this case, the scalar input t is telling the equation what distance the ray travels from the source point s in the direction d. The resulting point x is the point in the ray that corresponds to said distance t. The algorithm should be capable of calculating the point of collision, the normal vector of the surface at the collision point, and the distance the ray traveled before hitting the object. Our objective then is to find the smallest distance t that corresponds to a point x lying on the surface of the object. In the case of a sphere, or a circle, this point x is at a distance r from the center of the object. This r is of course the radius. Now, for reasons that will become obvious, it is better for us to perform the algorithm in a space relative to the center of the circle. That being the case, we can see that the distance r is equal to the magnitude of x. So now, we have two equations which describe the point of intersection of our ray with the circle. We can now combine both formulas and use some algebraic manipulation to find our distance t. Since the vector magnitude operation contains a square root, we start by squaring both sides. This turns our magnitude operation into a dot product. Now, remember that the dot product is distributive. This means we can turn a dot product with a sum into a sum of dot products. In fact, we can take it a step further and turn the dot product of two binomials into a sum of the four dot product combinations of their terms. This dot product of binomials formula will become quite important later, so I might as well make sure you pay extra attention to it. Applying this formula and simplifying a bit, we get the following trinomial. I might remind you that this entire time we've been trying to find the distance t. If we take a look at our latest formula and really think about it, we can conclude that this is an example of a quadratic equation. This means we can solve for t using our good old quadratic formula. As a last step, we can simplify our quadratic formula by noticing the presence of the constant 2 at both the top and the bottom of the fraction. By changing the definition of our b term, we end up cancelling out these constants. Also noteworthy is the fact that the dot product of d with itself is nothing else than the squared magnitude of our direction vector. Since we are assuming that d is a purely directional vector, its magnitude must be 1. About the plus minus sign, we only need the smallest distance for t, and we know the result of a square root must be positive in order to be real. Thus, we can replace this plus minus with just a negative. The question remains though, 
What happens if the radicand of our square root is negative? Well, this entire time we've been assuming that the ray and the circle intersect. In the case when they don't, it is logical to imagine that we will get an invalid answer. In order to get the point of intersection itself, we only need to plug our distance t back into the parametric equation for a ray. Finally, if we want to get the vector normal of the surface of the object at the point of collision, we take the same vector that goes from the sphere's center to the point of intersection and normalize it. Here's the source code used on this animation both to calculate the intersection and the surface normal. Note that the first function returns the distance t. Even though there might be tons of videos covering this topic, next video I will be connecting this method to the algorithm that calculates the intersection of a capsule and array. If you like this type of content, don't forget to leave a comment and give it a like so I know to continue this series. Special thanks to the YouTubers Grant Sanderson from 3Blue1Brown and Inigo Quiles for inspiring me to make the video. And thank all of you for your time.